Hey everyone, this is Devin Moreno and welcome to the Baltimore Investors Channel. And today we have a special video where my friend Will Bowman talks about how he gets to not only flip a house, not pay any capital gains tax on it, but also live in it for free for two years. So this is a live and flip style method using a house hack to live in it for free. He's going to explain it all and walk us through his house in this entire video. So I'll let him take it away and show you how it's done. All right, guys, this is Will Bowman here, one of my great friends in this real estate. So mm -hmm. tell him what you've done here with this live and flip. Yeah, so purchased this house last year in April, so April of 2018. Uh, bought it at an auction. This house had been vacant for 10 years and knew that I wanted to complete a live-in flip here with the property, uh, which Devin, I know you know, but for those who don't know, a live-in flip is when you purchase a property uh, with the intent of renovating it and flipping it, uh, but instead of immediately putting it back on the market to sell it when you're finished, you actually live in the property for a period of time. Uh, the reason for that is if you own or occupy a property for two years out of a five-year period, uh, you're exempt from paying the capital gains tax that comes on the profit from the sale. So there's a little bit of a tax advantage by us living here. And on top of that, we get to live in a sweet, brand new, renovated house that we designed ourselves. So you actually have a lot of equity in this house since you've re renovated it from like almost a shell, right? Yeah, it'll be a great payday when we sell one day, uh, somewhere around sixty, sixty-five thousand dollars $65,000. So how much did you actually buy a property like this for? Yeah, so we got this for $89,000, uh, and now the house is worth $335,000. Oh, check it out. <laughs> so, all right, I'm interested yeah. in all the designs you have going on here. So, uh, what did you do with this space exactly? Like, what did it used to look like? Where is it at now? Yeah, so as you can, you can see, we went very open concept, but the house was not originally like that. When it started, it was uh, almost divided into six different quadrants or rooms. Uh, and you can sort of see uh, the remnants of that based on where the posts and the bulkheads are. That's essentially where each room was. So what's now our living room uh, was closed off, had a wall right here and two columns and an archway entering it on that side. This was one room that we're standing in right now. Right. Uh, and then passing through underneath here were two large pocket doors, which looked really cool, um, but entered into what is now the dining room space. So we've taken all that down, made it just one big open flow. Um, and from a design standpoint and kind of the, the style or the theme we were going for, it's a cross between what I'll call farmhouse uh, and modern industrial. And you'll see some touches of both of those as we look at the different materials and products that we used. Actually, I'm interested in that, the, the whole material aspects you're talking about, you know, with a, since this is kind of a blend of a flip, you have to save as much as possible, but yet make it as nice as possible. Yeah. So how did you achieve that? Like what, like, let's say this fixture here, um, this looks kind of expensive. How did you yeah. achieve that? Well, so I knew, I mean, you make a great point. I was uh, going to be renovating to a, a class or a, a price uh, of the final renovation that required higher level finishes. But I also knew I have to keep my costs down so that I don't spend too much and this is still profitable for me. So for this light fixture right here, I actually purchased this through Wayfair's Pro program, which is similar to Home Depot or Lowe's where they'll give you discounts for buying things in bulk as a contractor or someone who's doing a large renovation. So I ended up getting this light fixture, which at any other store might be close to five, $600 for a little over 200. And it's now a great piece and kind of fixture of the dining room. All right, perfect. I actually never thought yeah. of Wayfair as an option. Yeah, Did they're awesome. End up doing that with this kitchen. Actually, I've got to yeah. show this. This is insane. Like, yeah. you have actually a blend of uh, almost farmhouse feel. What were you going for with this kitchen? Here? Yeah, so uh, again, we wanted to keep it open, inviting. I wanted someone. Uh, who came in to buy this house after us to envision themselves entertaining, hosting a lot of people here, being able to cook a large meal and having plenty of space for it. Uh, so, yep, you're right. We have that uh, kind of industrial vibe going on with the light fixtures we chose, with the, the faucet we chose here, but then a little bit of the, the farmhouse going on with the, the white cabinets, with the, the, the matte black uh, cabinet poles, and then the backsplash. We've got this large 33-inch uh, farmhouse sink. This is cool. But then right back to the industrial vibes with the the island here. Uh, this is yeah, poured noticing. poured what? concrete. This is concrete. That's concrete. This and the why use concrete? That's actually interesting. This actually looks really nice. What what were the advantages that you found using concrete? Was it more or less expensive than? It's way less expensive than granite or quartz or other material okay. options. This whole 
about 10 foot by four foot uh, concrete island was about 500, $550 worth of materials, which this would be in the thousands if it was a, a quartz or a granite. Um, where the cost comes in with this is in the labor. It does take a, a little bit of, of manpower to, to pour and, and to get constructed. But it's a great feature. I know when we put this house on the market one day, uh, buyers will come through and I'm, I hope they'll remember many things about the house, but I know they'll remember the concrete countertops because they're not seeing this uh, in and many other properties elsewhere. All right, so it's my understanding that you, this is not only a live and flip, you flip this property, you're living in it, but you also house hacked it because you live yes. for free. Tell them how that works. What is a house hack exactly? Yeah, so it's the dual threat. We're, we're doing the live and flip. We've got equity. We'll get a nice payday one day when we sell this house. But I'm also living here essentially for free by renting our basement on Airbnb. And the income that we're getting from that Airbnb rental is paying the vast majority of our monthly expenses. So that's our mortgage and even some of our utilities. And this summer when we had a really, really high amount of rentals uh, with people coming into the city for you know, uh, vacations or tourism, uh, we, we paid all of our expenses and then made some on top of that, which was really, really nice. So this is actually excellent if you have a family or in your case, a, a fiance. So, yeah, that's right. Yeah. All right, perfect. So yeah. no room sharing for you. <laughs> no, we got the, the house to ourselves and just uh, host guests in our basement, but they're entirely private from us. We don't see each other. We don't share space. Uh, we just don't go in the basement, you know, when, when they're here. Awesome. Well, let's go take a look at that. Let's actually. check it out. Cool. All right. All right. So here we are down in the basement sub level of this whole thing. And this is where yep. you live for free, right? This is, is this where you live or is this where the tenant actually lives? So this is where our, this is our Airbnb. So okay. I don't live down here. Uh, obviously when there are no guests here, like right now we can come down and use this space all we want. Typically we're just down here cleaning or turning over the unit, but this is our Airbnb space. Uh, this is rented nightly, weekly, uh, up to monthly would be the longest term that we would rent this. Uh, so far, we haven't had a rental longer than two weeks. All right. So with this, you actually managed to cover your mortgage. How much per day do you actually rent this for? Yep. So this goes for $85 plus a $15 cleaning fee, which is actually pretty low. Okay. Uh, what we found here in Baltimore is... Uh, the Airbnb market in terms of options is relatively low for a major city. Mm -hmm. The reason for that is there is a law that is passed about a year ago that restricts uh, a non-owner occupied Airbnb. This Airbnb, although, is perfectly legal because we do live here. This is our owner occupied residence. Uh, so this perfectly complies with that law. But what that means is that inventory of Airbnb in the cities is very low. You can basically only run an Airbnb legally out of the house that you live in or the property that you live in. Um, so prices are low, but competition is low as well. So we're finding that we're booked quite a bit, but the market just doesn't allow us to charge uh, a very high price versus let's say you're in Boston or New York City where you might yeah. be like, sure, I'll pay 200, $250 a night. You're just not getting that here in Baltimore, but that's okay. This still works just great for us. Well, for a low cost Airbnb, this is looking pretty good. Oh, yeah, that's the goal. A full kitchen pretty much. I mean, yep. I love it. Lots of amenities here. Mm -hmm. uh, over here looks what? Washer, dryer. Yep. How expensive okay. was like this to get all, was this like, did this make your live and flip model not work as well in the price, like to have to add this? Or was this factored into your overall ARV? This was factored into our overall ARV. The, the house that I mentioned that sold in, in April of last year had a kitchen in their basement as well. Uh, I added the washer and dryer and actually got these donated to me for free from a friend who was remodeling his, uh, his bathroom, which had his washer dryer in it, and he was going to a stackable washer dryer. So he just gave these to me. So all I had to pay for was just the plumbing and electric rough ends to hook them up. Oh, perfect. And I guess uh, the real bread and butter of this whole Airbnb concept is you have to have a separate entrance, which yes. you seem to have. Yeah, we've <laughs> so, got one on the, the back here and the front of the property, so folks can come, as, come and go as they please without uh, ever interacting with us, which is really nice. Uh, though we love our guests, we want us to have separate kind of private experiences. And uh, so how did you handle the electricity here. I've noticed you got an electric meter here. Is this the meter for the, not the meter, I'm sorry, the, the panel for the whole house, the circuit breaker? Panel? No, it's not. So this is just controlling the circuits here in the basement. And the reason we did that uh, was thinking about that privacy aspect. Circuits pop, circuits blow, things happen. Uh, no big deal. You just go to the circuit breaker and, and switch them back on. What we didn't want to have is if 
our circuits were having issues upstairs, we didn't want to have to come downstairs and disturb the folks who were down here and vice versa. If they had an issue with a circuit, maybe they had a hair dryer going and it popped the bathroom circuit or whatever, we didn't want them to have to come upstairs or bother us in our space. What if we weren't home or something like that? It can just cause issues. So I paid a little bit extra, a couple hundred dollars to have what's called a sub panel, which is what this is, which is just a separate electrical panel. So instead of sending all the circuits to be controlled in the upstairs circuit panel, uh, all of the basement circuits are on this one. And about what, it, what it would you say added the cost of this? Is this not that expensive to create another panel? Like, because I imagine a lot of you guys out there will want to do this kind of model. What, well, what, any extra cost? It, certainly extra cost. We're talking about a total $135,000 renovation that we did here. This was another $400, uh, <laughs> four or $500. Yeah. It just made right. sense. Yeah. yeah. All right, so this is actually one of the disadvantages of a lot of, um, like for instance, my, I have a duplex and yes. I share the meter with the other person. So unfortunately, if I need to flip this, one of the, not the meter, I'm sorry, the circuit breaker, if I, if yeah. I want to flip a circuit breaker or anything like that, I have to go into their side. Right. So the fact that you planned ahead, huge. Yep. So I, uh, I mean, what do we got here? We got the living room. Actually, yep. um, you have a, a water heater for this, like separated from your own or is it all combined? Yeah. So we're on, uh, we're on separate HVAC systems, so they have their own system down here to keep themselves cool or warm as they please, but we're on a common water heater. Um, and what we have in there is a, a tankless gas water heater. So tankless is great because it allows you on-demand hot water. You, If you were to drain a normal tank of hot water, you're out until the new water that comes in can be reheated. A tankless water heater is heating the water on demand uh, so that the water, the hot water is always there continuously. It's also more energy efficient because it's only heating what you need rather than constantly keeping a large 50, 60 gallon tank of water hot. So it's both uh, easier to use and more energy efficient for the property. So we have that installed in there. It's a large capacity because we have uh, four bathrooms in this house. Uh, we have two kitchens. There's a lot of need for water, so it can really service uh, the whole house. So I guess another question I have personally is uh, the thermostat. I actually noticed you have a thermostat over here. Yeah. Um, this is one of those Nest variants, right? Yeah. Okay. So I love this for an Airbnb for a couple reasons. One, it's fancy. It's new. The tenants think they're in a really cool, modern, fresh space, which they are. And it's exciting to use smart home technology. But what I also love about it is from my Nest app on my phone, I can lock the thermostat to have lower and upper ranges that the tenants can't set the temperature outside of. So in the summertime, yes, I want them to be cool, be able to turn the air conditioning to a reasonable temperature, but I don't allow them to turn it to 58 or something like that that's just absurd and, and is unnecessarily cold. And then in the winter, it's also set so that they can't make it 80, 81, 82 degrees down here. Um, just to help avoid uh, extreme energy bills. And also you can actually damage your furnace by pushing it too hard to, to cool or to heat uh, too quickly. So it kind of just helps uh, keep the peace. And, and if I notice that a, a tenant has left for the day but left the heat, I can see from my app on 75 degrees, I can turn it down to 70 you know, while they're out for the day and, and then they can turn it back up when they return. So I have a little bit of control uh, over the system that way. So that's actually perfect. This is actually a great way to save money on this property. Yep. Uh, make sure everything's kind of like, you know, I guess manageable. Sure. I love it. Yep. So any other design considerations you had when you made this Airbnb? Like just... Yes. The the floors were a huge consideration. So this is uh, what snap. Kind of floor is this? this is what? snap in place vinyl flooring. Uh, it is not just oh. water resistant, but waterproof. Um, and it's it's all plastic. So just about anything can happen down here. Spills, messes, water, whatever, and the flooring is going to be just fine. You can wipe it right up. Uh, it's super easy to install. It comes with its own uh, what's called underlayment already attached to it. So traditionally when you install a vinyl floor, uh, you're laying the flooring, but you're also laying out underlayment that goes underneath it. Those two things come together on this material. It's a little bit more expensive per square foot than the cheapest vinyl flooring that you might be able to buy from Home Depot or whatever. But I think from a looks and a durability and an ease of install, uh, this stuff wins every day. 
And so, this, what are you talking about, like $2 a square foot, sort of? Yeah, I want to say this is just over $2 a square foot, maybe $2.10, $2.20, something like that. Um, but I think it really adds and it just makes it so easy to clean down here. It's just a quick sweep, a quick mop, uh, and we're done. All right. And I guess, it, I guess other things were just a di design aesthetic. You have tile, bathroom yeah. flooring. I love yeah. this barn door vanity that you yeah. have going on here. I mean, uh, as far as the bedroom, uh, carpet, any concern about carpet in your rooms? Yeah. Uh, I mean, has that been an issue, maybe needing to replace it or just worth it? Hasn't been an issue. Uh, the reason we went with carpet was because we're in a basement uh, and basements tend to be a little more cold. Uh, we do have a concrete floor underneath us. So the, the carpet was just to help warm up and cozy up the bedroom a little bit. Uh, I like the feel of carpet under, underneath my feet. And honestly, the cost of installing carpet versus buying an area rug to go in there was about the same anyways. Um, yes, it's a little more of a concern to clean, uh, but look, at the end of the day, we're living here for free. So if someone had a massive spill in here and I had to replace the carpet or get it professionally yeah, cleaned, I'm gonna be okay. Um, and we do have to vacuum it, which is a little more work after each tenant versus just a quick sweep or mop. But um, I, I think it works out best in the end. All right, so everyone, that is the Live and Flip and House Hack Blend model here. Uh, so you got anything else you have for them as far as this whole how to live for free and also how to flip a house and live with it? Yeah, I mean, uh, the house hack aspect of this house was almost accidental. We bought this house intending to live and flip. We knew that from the beginning. That's what I went to the auction with in mind. I did not intend to turn this basement into a rental unit. But as we were evaluating the space that we had, uh, the budget that we had, it made sense. Uh, and I'm so glad that I did it. And that's, that's what's kind of cool about real estate investments is finding that hidden opportunity to add value based on whatever your circumstances. Uh, maybe I wouldn't have made the decision to finish out this whole space if we were just looking to sell it, right? And keep our costs as low as possible while maintaining the top value. But now not only do I have great equity here, but I also have monthly cash flow. Uh, and it's just, it's just a no brainer to live here for essentially free. Yeah. And then to get a nice payday one day when we sell, that's also tax advantaged. Right, perfect. Well, this mm -hmm. is Will Bowman. You're also a realtor, right? That's right. Yep. With Keller Williams. I do most of my business here in Baltimore city and the surrounding area. So, uh, give me a call 443-745-2155. Be happy to help you find something like this, uh, other investment properties in the city. I also love working with first time home buyers as well. All right, perfect. Just call the number at the bottom of the screen if you want Will Bowman. He's a Baltimore realtor, but you do help the entire Maryland, DC area. Yep. Yep. And uh, also, if you like videos like this, let us know. Comment below, like the video. We're going to show you a lot more of our properties on how our group lives for free using house hacking mm -hmm. and building equity with our flips and renovations. So I'll talk to you all real soon. Cool.